Hello, fourth graders. I have my soils back in front of me. And remember how I told you to put the letters on each one of them? So M stands for mountain. So the rocks and the soil that was close to a mountain has bigger pieces, right? There were lots more pebbles, big pieces of gravel, very little organic matter, humus in the soil. Okay, M stands for mountain. D stands for desert. So in the desert, there weren't very many pebbles at all, right? There were lots of small gravels, a lot of sand, maybe some clay or silt, and a little bit of organic matter. So there's not that many plants that are growing in the desert, right? So not, it seems like it would make sense that there would not be that much organic material in the desert. Okay, F, anybody have an idea what F might stand for? Forest. So a forest could be on, um, you know, near a mountain. A lot of times forests are growing in the mountains. And so there are some larger pebbles and gravel, but because there's lots of plants in the forest, there's a lot of organic matter, a lot of humus, and those that will make the, the soil darker. You will see that that soil is darker than the other. And then we have RD, and RD stands for River Delta. And at the River Delta, that's just before the water, the river is gonna go into the ocean or maybe a large lake, all of the finer parts of the rock, of the soils are still in that uh, water. And so at the Delta, that's where the water slows down, that's where the finer parts of the soils will be. So I see a lot of silt, I maybe a lot of clay, a little bit of small gravel and sand. Now, remember last time we had those materials in the vials and we added water. I'm gonna take a look at those now. In your science notebook, we have this glued into the next page. And now I want us to take a look at each one of those materials. So mountain, this is the mountain one, M, that's number one. And I want you to draw a picture of what it looks like in your science journal. M for mountain, number one. I see lots of larger pebbles, larger gravel, and a little bit of organic matter on top. When you finish that, we're gonna look at D. Number two is D, desert. And the desert has a lot of sand at the bottom and then a lot of silt and a little bit of organic matter up on top. This is the desert. Then I've got, the next one is F for forest. And in the forest, there are some larger gravel pieces. There's actually a big pebble on the inside there. Gravel, and but there's a lot more organic matter. Some of it's floating up at the top in the forest. So make sure that you include that. And the final one is the river delta, sand and clay and some organic matter. So make sure that you have drawn those pictures in your science notebook. If you were here in second grade, you probably remember Mount Belatesh. Mount Belatesh is a fictional mountain. It's not a real mountain. But imagine that there's a mountain out there and it's all made out of rock, right? And it's standing out in the rain and the cold and as it rains and it, the water freezes, cracks are formed in the mountain. And a huge rock may fall off of the mountain. Gravity pulls it down and as that rock rolls down the mountain, it cracks and it breaks into pieces. The biggest rock, a rock that's bigger than a basketball is called a 
boulder. And as that boulder rolls down the mountain, it breaks into smaller pieces. And those smaller pieces, about the size of a grapefruit, those are called cobbles. And those cobbles keep rolling down the mountain and they crash into each other and they break into pebbles. And those pebbles keep rolling down the mountain. Gravity is a pulling force. And it rolls down the mountain and continues to break and it turns into gravel. And the gravel keeps rolling down the mountain and it breaks into sand. And the sand keeps rolling down the mountain and it becomes silt. And then if the silt gets wet and is in water for a long time, it can become clay. Now, these are the names for different size rocks. And the way that rocks break into pieces is called weathering. Sometimes there can be physical weathering where the rocks just bump and crash into each other. It can go, go being pulled down by, the, uh, by gravity off of a mountain. It could be at the beach where the waves crash back and forth and the rocks roll back and forth against each other, breaking into smaller and smaller and smaller pieces. It could be wind moving the rocks and having them smash against each other, which makes them break into smaller and smaller pieces. When rocks break into smaller pieces, it is called weathering. And when they are just physically hitting each other, it's called physical weathering. I had asked you guys to get a stick, and I have a stick here, and my sandpaper. You guys have sandpaper in your kit as well. Now, right now, my stick is kind of rough, and I put down a piece of paper underneath here because I'm gonna take my sandpaper and I'm going to rub on the stick. And I don't know if you guys can see what's happening, but a whole bunch of material is falling off of my stick and onto the paper. My sandpaper is breaking the stick into smaller and smaller pieces and it's smoothing my stick. My stick started out very rough and the area that I've been sanding has become smooth and quite nice, very smooth. And then the sand, the wood that was broken, that was sanded off is now landed on the paper. Now imagine, instead of me rubbing the stick with sandpaper, imagine that I've got a nut, two rocks and they're bumping against each other as they roll down a mountain. And they, as they do that, they break and they create small little pieces. And these little pieces of rock are called sediment. Now, sometimes the rock will break into big pieces. Then those rocks, those pieces will break into smaller pieces. And that's how a large mountain is transformed into smaller and smaller pieces of rock. Here's our beautiful earth and we see all the different parts of the inside of the earth. We live on the crust and then there's the mantle, there's the outer core and the inner core. But if we focus just on the crust, let's take a look at these mountains. These mountains are made out of rock. And as that rock, as water and rain falls on it, as the water freezes and thaws, water breaks apart the rocks and carries it down the mountain. And as the water carries it down the mountain, as the rocks roll down because of gravity, they crash into each other and they break. And they start to break into smaller and smaller pieces. And as we get farther and farther away from the mountain, the rocks become more and more weathered and broken down and the earth becomes smoother and more weathered. So fourth graders, remember you need to write a question in your science notebook. What do you still want to know about rocks? 
What do you want to know about how rocks get smaller? It's up to you. Any question about the earth, soil, rocks, minerals, anything that you're interested in, make sure you write it in your science notebook. Scientists always ask questions. I hope you guys have a wonderful Thanksgiving. If you go to the beach, make sure you notice how the waves are making the rocks and the sand move back and forth. If you go outside and go for a hike, take a look at the rocks that you find there. The earth is a very interesting place. All right, have a nice Thanksgiving and I'll see you next week, guys.